Spanish Deontay Murray, and I'm uh, also Chutney Frog, and I'm also Torn and Frog. I know if y'all know my oldest son, he played football with him uh, about six, seven years ago. Whoa, well, longer than that, a few years ago and everything. Um, I've been a youth football track coach for the past 20 straight years and everything. And I'm the first one to thank Coach Floyd for giving the opportunity to speak with you guys. I apologize for the tardiness. I'm just coming from a meeting. Um, I played. Yeah, sports all the way from elementary through high school. It's pretty much just seniors right now, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and I want you guys really just soak in the moment because me and all my high school teammates are extremely close to this day. And I've been out of school up to 20 years ago. And a lot of the experiences that we had draw, drew us to be real, real close. And I want y'all to take consideration, we really didn't have a lot of success. I had three of my high school teammates went on to play pro ball. So I'm going to coach at different high schools here in Atlanta and everything, but we've all been able to stay extremely close regardless of the different endeavors that we did you know, going through life. And a lot of that has to do with the, with the experience that you guys incurred playing sports. You know, when you guys, you know, a lot of times coaches get on to you, you pressing attention to detail. Y'all understand why that's important, right? Do yes, y'all know why that's important? Yes, sir. Why do y'all think that's important? I'm also a former military person, so do y'all, I mean, just really, why do you think attention to detail, why, you do look at the ultimate team sport being football, why is it so important that all 11 guys on the field, regardless, you know, offense, defense, special team, why is it important? It's one of the key things we all go through in the military also. You know, everybody nodding their head. Everybody has a specific job to get to the same person, or for the team to get to the same person. Yeah, exactly. <coughs> and the thing of it is, just like we in the military, we on the team, you're doing a mission. If one person makes a mistake, everybody get killed. And I, uh, again, just the same thing, if you make one mistake on one plate, if one person don't miss a block, one person don't catch a ball, one person forget the snap count, the whole game can be over. So it's that serious, that attention to detail. You guys learn how to communicate. You can, your other classmates in a different class, they're not getting the experiences that you guys are getting. Think about it in terms of just working with a group of teams. Some people just, to be honest with you, they don't like working with people. They gotta be by themselves. You know, and sometimes I'm pretty sure over the years you guys have started where I really don't like speaking to people, I don't like dealing with, with people. But it's critical soon, pre-snap, during the play, you guys gotta make calls and stuff, you know, during it so everybody know what's going on. <clears throat> A lot of folks can't do that. Handling adversity. I remember sitting out there at you guys where county game. Dad, I was very, I was so proud of you guys to look back all the times you guys, unfortunately, you know, I know it didn't end the way you want it in, but that said a lot about you guys, your coaches, and your program because you could have quit so much. And when you go through life, guys, I want you to understand, you're gonna have situations where that stuff's gonna come up again, and some of the resiliency that you guys learned just being on this team is gonna carry your whole life further. Again, keep in mind, like I say, you're not gonna, your, your, your fellow classmates, they're not going through that kind of stuff. Okay, so I really want you guys to appreciate what you guys are going through. Because I look back at some of the stuff over my coaching in high school will say to me, and I probably, I'm sure I'll be like most of y'all. Coach Lord, when the coach say something to y'all, I got it, I got it, I got it. Coach will know what he's talking about it. But they say it because they know more about being 16, 17, 18 than you do. But they've been there before, right? And the thing about it, I remember mean, when my coach grabbed me one time, and he was just my nigga named Poochie. He was like, Poochie, I need to talk to you. He said, you're making some bad decisions doing, you know, with people that you really shouldn't be doing it with. And what stuck with me, he, he grabbed me, and I know he meant it, because he kind of hurt my arm, he screwed my arm so tight. But he said that after you graduate, most of these people you're not even really gonna see again. And I thought about it, and he said, no, he said, yo, one or two little buddies, you'll see them. But the vast majority of people that you see in every day, you're doing your senior year, you're not gonna see them again. Maybe in passing every now and then, but the vast majority won't see. So, just like he told me, I'm gonna tell you guys, don't make decisions to do certain behaviors for people that you're not really even gonna be around. Always stay true to yourself. So, with that said, guys, I wanna kinda of give you guys three questions I want you guys to ask yourself. And I always remember them to kinda of be like a guide and rule for yourself going forward, you know, after, for life after graduation, okay? That first question I want you to ask yourself, uh, you ready for life after John Brown High School? Now, what do y'all think about that? Y'all ready for it? Okay, here's the deal. I know some of you guys get ready to go to college. 
Some are thinking about going to trade school, some military. And some of you guys really don't know what you want to do, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. It's actually quite common, you know? The problem that comes up is you cannot stop dreaming. You cannot stop, you know, inspiring and aspiring to do certain things further in life. And what can happen a lot of times is just say, if you want to be uh, a doctor, lawyer, a musician, athlete, or whatever, you're going to hear certain things. And, what, and if you hear certain things that you don't necessarily want to hear or that you don't think is productive, we start doing certain actions that kind of suppress it where we start being inactive. And that stuff keeps it down. And I want you guys to understand, going forward in life, especially at the high school, you're gonna see some of your friends doing certain things that, you know, like, wow, he's doing good. In the next year or so, you'll see it. And I ain't really at the point where I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm supposed to be in life. And I want you guys to understand that their journey. And what that means by that is, their route to get success in life and your route is totally different. Because that's theirs and yours is yours. So always keep hold of what you want to do, okay? They can make it instant success as soon as you guys graduate. Yours may take five or six years. So make sure you stay on your plan. You know, if you be in a situation where you got to work all day and go to school at night, that's what I had to do. You have to do it. You're going to get people that's going to doubt you. You're going to get people that's not always going to see the world the way you want to see it. You're going to have rough roads, bad days, and everything like that. But you're always going to have your dreams. You're always going to have the stuff that you want to do. And you got to keep hold on it because when you keep your dreams, that's what's going to help you go forward in life, okay? The second thing, this is very, very important, guys. Are you guys ready to make tough and hard decisions? Are y'all ready for that? Now, I know some of you guys have already had them opportunities where you had to make them kind of decisions now, but it's a little different when you get older. Once you get out of high school, guys, you're going to be away from mom, daddy, big sister, brother, your teachers, administrators, your coaches. You're going to be on your own. You're going to kind of be almost like grown, you know. Kind of, I kind of look grown a little different. I think grown is more a state of the, of the pocket more than state of the mind, because if you're still going back as mom and dad for some money, you ain't truly grown. <laughs> but you're going to have a lot of freedom that you normally don't have. That's what my point, okay? Nobody's going to be around you. And you're going to have to understand the power of decision making, okay? We talk about this time next year, some of y'all might be in school. Should I stay up late? Should I stay up late? You know, try to cram for the test in the morning to do that. You know, you know, I see these guys smoking weed at the party. I don't really know them, but you know, I'm going to try because everybody seems pretty cool. We all know if you got cocaine or whatever crack inside of it. Should I have unprotected sex with this young lady? She ain't coughing or nothing like that. She ain't sick on her deathbed. She look real good. Should I go on and do it? But I want y'all guys to understand something. The most beautiful woman in the world got AIDS. She, she ain't gonna be look, she, she not gonna look sick. She look just like making a stab. <laughs> <laughs> and we laugh, guys, we laugh, and I'm just telling you that's what's gonna happen. And then six months to a year later, you get an HIV diagnosis. And you wonder what happened. Y'all gotta be smart, you gotta think. Okay? It's very, very critical. I want you guys to understand something that's very important. Once you get out of high school, the chance that mom and dad can help you get out of trouble is less likely. We come, they come to the now, go talk to the teacher and kind of, you know, maybe try to mess coach or something like that and get you out of it, or hey, please, you're a good kid. Ain't gonna happen once you got out of school, okay? And the severity of some of your decisions are much, much greater. You understand? Also, some of the bad decisions that can impact you a whole lot further than life. You making a bad decision, get into a fight or something like that, you spend it for a couple of days, that's over with. You get a, uh, a drug charge, an assault charge, just because y'all got to fight outside of a skating rink or a party, that can last you a whole lot longer. Now you can't get employed now you graduate from college. So I want you guys to understand that. So all I'm asking you guys to do is, before you do something you're comfortable with, just think. Just think. If you gotta think twice about it, don't do it. Okay? Third thing, third and last thing, guys, I want you guys to remember this. Um, I want you guys to, are you prepared to constantly keep evolving them to the best you possible? And this right here is very, very important. And this is why I think right now in the world, we have a lot of issues with a lot of people. You guys are in a great position because you're in this whole technological innovation age, right? And you have to, the world, if you look at it, the world's constantly going. People getting born every day, people dying every day, things constantly shifting, right? Techno technology innovation is going to constantly be around, right? You guys got to be prepared and adjust for that, okay? What does technology do?
What y'all think technology does? Speed everything up, anybody else? Ain't no wrong, guys. Tell us what's going on on earth, anybody else? Make life easier. Make life easier. Good answers. But you know something else technology does? Take jobs. It takes jobs. It takes jobs away. If you guys look over here at what technology has done, let's see how it impacted the uh, transportation industry. You had Uber and Lyft just wiped out the cab industry. Look what Airbnb has done to the hotel lodging industry. You see what email and FedEx and uh, UPS have done. You know, the post office, really, government just keeping the post office open, right? These are all technological uh, innovations that have made changes, guys, and you guys have to be prepared to adjust for that, okay? You guys got to constantly make sure you're adding value to yourself. Y'all know what I mean by adding value? Keep bettering yourself. Keep what? Bettering yourself. Keep bettering yourself. Anybody else? Yourself. You develop new skills. Develop new skills. Anybody else? Let me tell you what value is. Value is that premium people will pay for a skill set of gift you have. Here, a lot of times, people, when you go to a, 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 a job or you're trying to, to do a certain thing, I just say you're trying out for a position and whatever. And everything's equal. Everybody on the same 40, everybody lives the same, everybody do everything else. What's the, the, the added boost that you have? We start talking about value. That's what people pay extra for. You know, if you, if you can make me money, I'm going to pay for it. If you can do the job everybody else can do, I can get anybody. You feel like, okay, I'm valuable, I have some kind of worth, but in essence, you don't. I can get somebody else. But if you do something that nobody else can do, that's when people pay you for it. The world is always gonna need two things, thinkers and fixers. And you gotta figure out where you fall between those two. If you're gonna be a doer, I ain't gonna say, you know, you're gonna have a rough time, but you might have a rough time. Because anybody can do something. But when we start talking about thinkers and fixers, if you can repair something, create something, the world always needs you. Now, I want you guys to be always kind of thinking about that, okay, going forward, all right? Because you're in a great position because you have so many opportunities. Yep, you guys' generation can make millions of dollars sitting at the computer at home all day in your underwear. You don't have to go anywhere. They pay all kind of money just for everything for the neck up. Seize them opportunities. Put yourself in a position where people will want to give you money as opposed to you asking for money, okay? So, guys, let me ask you again. Are you guys ready for life after high school? Yes. Wake up now. <laughs> you guys prepared to make some of those tough and hard decisions? Yes, sir. Okay. You guys are ready to keep evolving and become the best you possible? Yes, sir. Okay. Listen, guys, I got full confidence that you guys are going to do it. I know your parents and family members do, your coaches and all the administrators at the school, and most importantly, I know you guys will. Good luck with your game tomorrow. I'm super proud of you, and I look forward to seeing the impact you guys are going to make on the world tomorrow. Okay.